Hey, welcome back to We Ride Motos. I'm Glenn. And I'm Carrie. In this episode, we are leaving the Cinque de Terre and we travel to Bologna. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited because that's where the Ducati factory is. And I booked a tour for us. There's a voice that keeps on calling me Down the road, it's where I'll always be Every stop I make, I make a new friend Can't stay for long, just turn around and I'm gone again Maybe tomorrow, I wanna settle down Until tomorrow, I'll just keep moving on So when we get to uh, Bologna, uh, because we had to leave La Spezia a day early, we didn't have, Carrie had booked our place in Bologna, but we had to make up a night. Yeah. So just on a whim, she, she got on, she booked us a place, uh, which was kind of like an industrial students or industrial workers yeah. camp. It was very, It was. I don't know. <laughs> kind of had that Russian era work yeah. work vibe to it. Yeah, I think they rented it like if somebody came into town to work for a week or a month or something, they'd just rent in this place. So anyways, we were able to get it for Are a night. Are we recording? I think so. Better check. I guess we are recording. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk for 20 yeah. minutes and then... Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so then we we just went there and, and we went out for an even you know, walk in the evening and we actually came across a group of people now we can't remember if they were touring or it was a club or what it was, but they were line dancing wearing yeah. cowboy get ups in here we are in Italy, Italy and we're from Western Canada yeah. where that would it was very Alberta like very, yeah. very Western Canada ish yeah. in the middle of Italy. And they were actually really good. Yeah, they were bad. Yeah. So, so then we were there one night and we thought, okay, now we can go to our next apartment. And as it turned out, it was quite hilarious. It was right across the road. Yeah. <laughs> Car- <laughs> Carrie I didn't even basically said, I'm not going to, she just walked over <laughs> through a gate and she was there. It took me longer yeah. to make my way through the one way streets to get yeah. to the front door. I didn't realize it was right next to each other, but that, that worked out well. Yeah. And it, was, it was kind of interesting because the guy, the, the couple that owned it, um, there's a garage in the basement and we kind of hinted we were looking for a place to store the bike. So he took me down to look at it and and it was packed full of what looks like a restaurant equipment. Yeah, and yeah. So we discussed with him about the possibility of using that, you know, to yeah. store, but in the end, yeah, we ended up too far away. So it just didn't, didn't yeah. work out, but. But that was very, very kind of him to offer, you know. Yeah, I think he was, I think he'd offered and then he's kind of like, Oh, I have to clean this yeah, mess up. Yeah, what would I do with all my stuff? What am I going to do with yeah. all my crap? Yeah. So, but... And then, so so day one was the Ducati factory. So, because Carrie owns a Ducati, yeah, uh, she wanted to go to the factory. So, yeah, we, we took the tour. And Now, you're not allowed to have your camera. No pictures in the factory, obviously. They are doing their, you know, testing. Even the... Well, it's the actual... Ducati factory. This yeah. is where Ducati motorcycles are designed. Yeah. All the R and D is done. In yeah. fact, there's one whole area we couldn't go in because yeah. it was all R and D. They had it all taped so you could see. But they're yeah. building. We watched them build the engines. From, yeah. And test the bikes and ship, put them on yeah. trucks. Like yeah. this is Ducati. And a lot of women were in the actual, you know, where you put the motors together with the fine. It seemed the women did the work that was more the fine motor skills and the yeah. men did the work that was more like once the motors bash together, the bolts they, in to put yeah, it all together they'd and heave it up and put the bike together. And they had little robots that would bring the parts that they needed. Yeah. Um, somebody put it all into a little robot and he'd take it over to whoever was working on it. Yeah. And with all the pieces that they needed. So if they had pieces left at the end, they know they missed something. Yeah. <laughs> What's this bolt for? Yeah. Now the museum, so we toured the factory mm-hmm. and then we toured the museum. And now the museum was opened in 1998. Uh, just to, I guess, showcase Ducati mm-hmm. and where they came from. And Ducati actually started way back 
I'm gonna say in the 20s, and they started making shortwave radios because that was the technology of the day, and, mm -hmm. and within 10 years, they had thousands of people working. They started with bikes too, didn't they? Like just the, uh, like was, a pedal bike with a motor on it or that something? That was, so, so they did that, and then when the war came, their factory got destroyed mm. in 1944. And then when they came out of that, that's when they got in. So the new rage was, how do we make mass transportation oh. cheap? So mass transportation cheap was little engines that bolted to mm -hmm. pedal bikes. Yeah. And that was yeah. where Ducati on the bike. So they made these little mo bolt on motors, they made scooters and small, yeah. small CC motorcycles. And that's where they came from. Yeah. And, and they basically grew and grew and grew and yeah it was quite interesting it was interesting to see all the different uh... yeah they went from a bolt-on motorcycle engine to you know one yeah. of the premium brands of the day you yeah know, even today right yeah so. yeah so i think that took up most of our day that was a whole day so. time. So the second day, we went uh, into the heart of Bologna, mm -hmm. kind of downtown where the squares are, and Carrie had done a bunch of research, and we and so we kind of, because we only had the day, we, we went on to Atlas Obscura, and we said, mm -hmm. what is there to do in Bologna? And that's always an easy way to find some... Some interesting different... Yeah, a little more off the yeah. beaten path, kind of off the wall stuff. So. Um, the first one that we hit was the Piazza Maggiore. Now, again, I'm, language is not my thing, but the Piazza Maggiore. So this is a, there's, I'm just checking my notes. There's the Fountain of Neptune, the Basilica of San Petronio, banking, police offices, um, all the city offices, all in this one big area. And uh, so the Basilica of San Petronio, Petronio um, is considered a minor basilica, but it was, it's quite expansive. I mean, this front was big and then it just kind of goes all, all on in the back. And it started construction in 1390, something like that. And it's dedicated to the Saint, Saint Petronius. Um, but the front has never been finished. It basically got built to a certain level and they never finished it. Hmm. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of got half done and they kept expanding. I mean, there's lots of, of um, um, I don't want to call them names. They're little things dedicated, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Forget that. Anyway, the, the face has been unfinished. So, um, but the interesting thing was is the church complex wasn't consecrated till 1954. Oh, wow. So started in 1390 <laughs> and then consecrated in 1954. And then the relics were moved there in the year 2000. Oh, wow. So this, this, I mean, this thing's been getting built yeah, for that's ever. A lot. That's a lot of years. <laughs> uh, yeah. And way back when they wanted to build it, there was a bunch of other churches and the block and everything that was there. And they just, they, they basically leveled eight other churches in the whole oh, street wow. so they could start building this. That, yeah. So, you know, that's, so in the, in the square as well is the statue uh, or Neptune's found um, statue. And it was built in 1563 or started in 1563 to 1566. And it was to commemorate the election of Pope Pius the fourth. Oh, okay. Um, and it sits on, so there's Neptune with his trident and his outreached hand is supposed to be something like the 
deference or recognition of the Pope. And then the four dolphins represents the Ganges, the Nile, the Amazon, and the Danube rivers. Oh, okay. And then the trident is the inspiration for the Maserati oh, car symbol. That's interesting. And then there's the Atlas Obscura yeah. side note of so the sculptor sculpted this, but the Pope was not happy with the size of the boy parts on the on the statue. So he was told, he was intimidated by yeah, Neptune's maybe Neptune. He was told to make it smaller, and so he did. The artists don't really like to be told what to do, but he did. But so, from a certain angle, so the outstretched hand, yeah. right, and the thumb is sticking out. And it all looks great, but if you walk around and you come around at just such an angle, it looks like Neptune... Didn't get made smaller. <laughs> might have gotten made... <laughs> Bigger. And he's kind of happy. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway. So, so that's, that was kind of the artist's way of kind of getting back, I guess, of, uh, uh, of being told how to change its statue. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, these artists, they... Some of the stories are quite interesting. So there's two... There's. Kind of like Luca, where they got in the, the the wealthy got in the pissing match. Yeah, they're my. Right. I'm building the towers. I'm not sure how many towers belong they had at one time, but uh, a lot. But there's just two left. So two two main ones anyway. Okay. I didn't look about whether they're yeah. But there's two there's two main towers. Uh, there's a tall one and it's 312 feet, and a shorter one which is about 150. 50 odd feet and the interesting thing with these two towers is that they are both leaning and the shorter one is actually leaning currently more than the leaning tower of Pisa mm. but it doesn't get the you know it just doesn't get the recognition yeah, so. yeah. Hmm. but yeah it's kind of cool the tall one uh, has been owned by the city since the 14th century hmm. and they've used it for pretty much everything but uh, it was used as a prison at one time oh, wow. And then they had built a, they built a, a wooden bridge between the two towers at a hundred feet up so that they could, I guess, defend things because oh, okay. they always wanted to defend things. Yeah. And scientists use this tall one uh, to experiment on heavy objects and Earth's rotation, so you know, the pendulum thing. Mm. So mm -hmm. quite interesting. A, quite interesting history. Yeah. And the shorter one used to be two hundred feet tall, but then I guess as it's leaning they got a little worried about it so they actually made it smaller oh which would be quite unusual and apparently it's actually closed now it was open when we were there but as of october 23 it's closed because well we definitely they're kind of glad we didn't climb up that one then yeah they're, <laughs> they're they, even sketchier they've decided to to try to straighten it out and apparently it's going to take 10 plus years to do it and cost oh, wow. multiple millions of euros to yeah they don't, they don't have the space there like they did at Pisa where they could just put the ropes around it and, yeah. and pull it back. The porticos of Bologna are really interesting. So porticos are these basically covered walkways and they started way back in the day when the land owners or the building owners wanted to have more building without paying the city. So they just started to build these things out over the street and eventually they got too big and too heavy and then the city had to come in and say, no, you've got to support them and we don't want them made out of wood, we want them made out of brick and stone. And hmm. But it yeah. has it has made uh, a lot of extra living space. And yeah, and it's nice when you're walking, especially in the rain. We, the rain and sun. We encountered that when we were in Genoa, they had the porticos too, is you can at least be dry while you're going between all the shops. Or... Yeah. There's supposed to be 53 kilometers wow, that's a lot. of these porticos. Nice. And the longest is is four kilometers, one continuous portico, and it's used in an annual procession to um, one of the churches, mm. I think San Luca might be. But uh, the interesting thing is, is it's a processional that's used in an annual event and it has 666 arches. Oh, so here's, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Here's the artists playing games or yeah. the architect playing games. need to get the all playing that kind games. of stuff in. Bologna also has some um, canals in, in their city which are less known. And one of the Atlas Obscura things was 
to find some of these. So we actually uh, yeah you yeah Atlas did. Obscura you just hike down and you wouldn't even know you're on a um, canal, but there's a little door and you yeah. open the little door yeah. and look out and there's the canal. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was one of the interesting ones. There was another one with three arrows that had been shot into, I guess, one of the old porticos, but it was wooden. And, yeah, and, there's, still, and there's three arrows still stuck up there, but we're not quite sure what the story is. About I have a picture it. of it, but honestly... It's hard to see. Yeah, I yeah. think I think we saw the arrows. I, but we weren't the only ones looking, because there was other, oh, other yeah, people you, that were... You walk over and you look, and you know you're in the right spot, because yeah. they're like, Yeah, we're just trying to find up. them, yeah. Yeah, so Atlas Obscura is actually, yeah. if you want something interesting to do on yeah. a day, it's yeah. has always been... It's a fun little uh, scavenger hunt. To yeah, go the just and... something other than the big yeah. regular stuff, Yeah, we right? enjoy doing that. So after we're done here, two days in Bologna, um, we are headed to Venice. Yeah, Venice. Yeah. Which is where Carrie's wanted to go for. Yeah, Venice is. Venice is very Venice. Italian this well, stop. Yeah. It's another one of these places you're here and you have to go. Yeah. So, anyway, we will see you in the next episode. See you then.